Hi, this tutorial is about quartal arpeggios. Now, if you want to know more about quartal harmony as a theoretical and practical concept, then please watch my video about quartal harmony. So, whether you want to find new ways for composing or just want to find new modern sounds for improvising, quartal chords, quartal arpeggio and quartal harmony is a great tool for that goal. So let's quickly find out what a quartal chord is. Now, a quartal chord is built from fourth intervals instead of third intervals, like the traditional chords that we play every day. A C quartal chord, for instance, is a stack of fourth intervals. It is built from the note C, a perfect fourth higher F, and again, a perfect fourth higher B flat. So you might notice that it has no third E or E flat, and this means that it sounds neither major nor minor. It is an ambiguous sounding chord. In the key of C major, the B flat should be a B, but it is still a quartal chord, but now built from a perfect fourth and an augmented fourth, C, F, and B. So that's possible too. Now, quartal harmony sounds modern and ambiguous. Now, quartal harmony was developed in the 20th century to move away from the functional harmony by stacking fourth intervals instead of third intervals. Now, chords made in this way sounded very different and ambiguous and didn't need to resolve. Like this. Now, quartal harmony has come a long way. From the first occurrence in the form of a Tristan chord in the opera Tristan and Isolde, which was composed by Richard Wagner in the 19th century. to the modern jazz and fusion and rock in our 21st century. Now, a very famous instance and great example of a modern quartal chord is the So What chord that was uh, named after the song wherein it was used. And the song So What was composed by Miles Davis and Bill Evans that were early users of the quartal harmony in jazz. It is a stack of three perfect fourths and a major third which creates a kind of undefined and floating sound. And in fact, you could see this as a minor 7 11 chord. Now, what would be the first thing that you would play over an A minor 7 chord? Of course, the A minor pentatonic scale. Boring. Maybe sometimes, but it can also be a very interesting skill. It has already an ambiguous sound because of that large intervals you find in this skill. So the pentatonic scale can be a great platform in relation to quartal arpeggios. Now, if we look at this pentatonic scale pattern, we can discover three quartal arpeggios within this pattern and thus within the scale. Starting on A, we have a quartal chord A, D, and G. Starting on E, we have the quartal chord E, A, and G. And starting on D, we have the quartal chord D, G, and C. Using just these three quartal arpeggios from the pentatonic scale, we already have changed our solo uh, to a dreamy sound. If you watch my tutorial or ebook about superimposing pentatonic scales, then you will understand that we can play an E minor pentatonic scale over an A minor 7 chord to create a slightly different sound. And that's because of the ninth B that is present in this E minor pentatonic scale. And this is interesting because now we can play the quartal arpeggios of the E minor pentatonic scale too, like in this simple example. Another way to approach the minor pentatonic scale is to harmonize every note uh, in that scale as a quartal chord by adding perfect fourths below the target note. Now let's use the E minor pentatonic scale for this with the notes E, G, A, B, and D. If we harmonize all notes 
of the E minor pentatonic scale and use the same quartal shape with only perfect fourths for every note, then we'll get this. This is called planing, and planing is a technique that uses parallel intervals or parallel chord movement. You can also add the blue note and harmonize that as a quartal chord too, to get closer to the jazz and blues sound. Anyway, if we look again, then uh, we'll notice that we have gained two extra notes by planing, namely the major second and major sixth. Hmm, that looks suspiciously like the Dorian mode with that major sixth in a minor scale. So now we have created an uh, ambiguous quartal chord within the ambiguous Dorian mode. In the next example, I use these quartal chords just as chords, like texture, and as uh, arpeggios. So the pentatonic scale is a good way to start with quartal chords. But in the diatonic major scale we can build quartal chords too. So let's take that glorious C major scale and harmonize the notes uh, with quartal chords right now. First we'll harmonize the C major scale with the tertian harmony to hear the difference. Now we'll get C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished and again C major. That's old hat, isn't it? Let's do the same, but now with quartal chords. Now we can use these chords in the same way as we did with the pentatonic scale, only now it sounds different because the shapes are not all the same. Now, here's a little example. By using these quartal arpeggios of the C major scale over the D pedal tone, we'll get the D Dorian modal sound, because D Dorian is the second mode of C major and thus uses the notes of the C major scale. Now in this way we can create all kinds of modal sounds, for instance, uh, quarter arpeggios derived from the C major scale sound Lydian over an F major 7 chord, uh, F being the fourth mode of C major. Keep in mind that you can create all kinds of rhythmic variations to empower that floating and ambiguous sound of quartal arpeggios. Some quartal arpeggios sound better than others over a particular chord. Now, in jazz, the 2-5-1 is a very common building block in progressions and standards. In the minor key, the 2-5-1 is built from the half diminished chord on the second degree, the dominant or altered chord on the fifth degree, and the tonic. Now over the chords on the 2nd and 5th degree, we can use specific quarter arpeggios that carry the color tones and tension notes of that chord. Over the F sharp minor 7 flat 5 chord, we can play the quarter arpeggios of the G major scale, because F sharp minor 7 flat 5 is the 7th degree in that G major scale. The quarter arpeggio of the 4th degree contains the notes B, E and A. The note B is the 4th or 11th degree in the F sharp minor 7th flat 5 chord, and the note E is the minor 7th and the note A is the minor 3rd. The quarter arpeggio on the flat 5th degree C contains the notes C, F sharp and B. The note C is the diminished 5th, the note F sharp is the root, and the note B is the 11th. Both arpeggios over the F sharp minor 7th flat 5 chord sound like this. Over the B dominant 7 or B altered chord, we can use the quarter arpeggios of the B altered scale, 
which is the same as the C melodic minor scale starting on the note B. Now this scale is great to play over dominant or altered chords. And if you want to know more about the melodic minor scale or the altered scale, just watch those videos on my channel. The quarto chords in the B altered scale on the third degree D and the fourth degree E flat work very well. And needless to say is that the E flat is enharmonic equal to D sharp. The D quarto chord contains uh, the sharp 9D, the sharp 5G and the sharp, and flat 9C. The E flat quarto chord contains the major third D sharp, the minor 7th A and the sharp 9D. Quarto chords over the whole 2, 5, 1 in E minor sound like this. Now besides three voice quarto arpeggios, we can also play four voice quarto arpeggios. And this is something what, for instance, Alan Holdsworth did in his inimitable solos. And if you haven't heard of Alan Holdsworth, then you really should see some videos, videos of this groundbreaking guitarist. The albums Metal Fatigue and Etta Vacron are my favorites, but all other albums are masterpieces too. A four voice quarto arpeggio on the note E, for instance, would be E, A, D and G. The four voice quarto arpeggio can now be played with two notes per string, which creates a wide stretch and involves string skipping. So big hands may help here. So the basic arpeggio looks like this. The beautiful thing is that it can be played over more than one chord. For instance, over an E minor 7 chord, we'll get an E minor 11 sound, E, G, B, G and A. And over an A minor 7 chord, we can create an A minor 7 sus 4 sound, A, D, E and G. And over the C minor 7 chord, we can create a C6-9 sound, C, E, G, A and D. So let's listen to the arpeggio over the different chords. And we can use tapping technique for different sound and different speed. Now, quarto chords lend themselves for creative soloing, because the sound is so undefined and still can seamlessly connect to the common improvisation ideas that we play every day. The possibilities are endless and sometimes it creates an inside feel, sometimes it creates an outside feel. So experimenting with the shapes and sound is something that you could do yourself. Just start with quarto chords from the minor and major skill. So I saw a video of an interview of an extraordinary a guitarist called Matteo Manusco. And Matteo is one of the best and most promising fusion guitarists on the planet with his adapted classical fingerstyle technique. Maybe you've heard of him. In the interview, he played a demanding quartal arpeggio lick. I adapted to the lick so that it is in reach for everyone that can play an arpeggio. It is a lick that uses an A minor pentatonic scale as a framework for the quartal intervals. All notes come from the A minor scale, so the lick can be played over an A minor 7 chord, but also over a C major 7 chord, D minor 7 chord, and F major 7 chord. As you can see, I also use a classical fingerstyle technique. Now, I studied classical guitar at the conservatory, so for me it feels very natural. But I can imagine that if you don't play uh, with your fingers all that much, it will be more convenient for you to uh, use your pick and use a kind of sweep picking technique maybe. We know that fourths and fifths are quite the same intervals. They are inversions of each other and have a very similar sound. Now every quartal chord can be arranged as a quintal chord, containing the same notes, only now the intervals are fifths. Starting on A, we have a quartal chord A, D and G. Rearranging the notes to G, D and A results in a quintal chord. The sound is more open than the quartal version. Now for this I'll use a four voice quintal arpeggio starting on the note G, followed by quartal arpeggios in the G major scale over the A minor 7 chord. Now 
Now the next fusion lick is also built with fifth intervals and slides in the key of E minor. By stacking those fifth intervals we'll create added nine arpeggios. And in this lick we chain two added nine arpeggios built from the fifth intervals and a B minor seven arpeggio that starts with a fifth. Now here I will show you the quarter chords in the scales that we have seen in this video. So in the minor pentatonic scale we have the following three voice quarter chords or arpeggios on different string sets. In the major scale we have these shapes on strings 1, 2 and 3. These shapes on strings 2, 3 and 4. These shapes on strings 3, 4 and 5. and these shapes on strings 4, 5 and 6. Quarter arpeggios are an essential tool for jazz fusion and progressive rock guitar players. Anytime you want to create an undefined or outside sound that floats in an ambiguous uh, way, quartal chords and quarter arpeggios are the way to go. Quartal chords are a bit difficult to play at first, but when you get used to the shapes, it's much fun to use these sounds in combination with the stuff you're already playing. So I hope this was crystal clear for you. And like I said, watch my tutorial about quartal harmony to learn more about this subject in common. I'll see you next time in another video. For now, goodbye, and I have fun with these quartal arpeggios. Bye.